when I left you last week, I'd machined a set of uh, tool holders to go on my quick change tool post. This week, let's finish them off properly and use them. Hi, and welcome back to this, episode 30 of playing around with a little uh, hobby mini lathe. Let's get this machine a bit dirty, shall we? Someone pointed out that I'd actually made a new riser block, so I guess that's times two. Now before I can blue these parts, they need to be grease free. So first I'll go over them with uh, dishwashing liquid and a bit of scouring pad, and then I'll hit them with brake cleaner just before I blue them. On a manual lathe, it doesn't really matter whether you number or name your tools or whatever because you always pick them up by sight and then just automatically touch them off when you start using them. On a CNC machine, however, you have to tell the machine which tool it's using so it knows which offsets to use. So what I next need to do is engrave numbers on each of these tool holders. For engraving, I use this little D-bit engraver. Basically, it's a piece of 3mm carbide where I've ground a single cutting edge down this side. The other side's relieved away a bit. Now if we look at it closely, we will see that the engraving corner, that's the corner that's uppermost now, is kind of rounded over. It's got blunt, so I need to regrind it. I think I'll try freehanding this. It only needs a tiny touch up. Just to check my toolpath with the engraver, I've put on two layers of tape and blackened it and now I'm going to engrave the tape and make sure it's uh, going to engrave in the right spot. Okay, let's see how that came out. I think it might have gone slightly too deep because it was into the metal. Nine. No, wait. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. It always drives me nuts when you're trying to adjust the height of a quick change tool post holder. When you go to lock the jam nut, the whole stud turns. So I'll just put a bit of Loctite on these. I've cleaned out and degreased the holes. So a bit of Loctite and crank them down nice and tight. And hopefully they won't ever turn again. Here you can see the screws I put in. Basically, first I mounted the tool block, dialed it in with a dial test indicator, and then turned the head of those screws down until they just fit, just touching, and that gives me a nice repeatable position. 
Well, I think it's about time this machine actually starts earning its keep by doing something semi-useful. What I've got here is a, the set of tools I'm going to use to make a set of these knurled knobs. At the moment I'm just using some washers to sort of fake it. The tools I've got are going to be a facing tool, the drill, uh, this is just a normal turning tool, knurling tool, and then finally cutting off. My stock is just a piece of uh, scrap binium. I have no idea what the alloy is. I've no idea how difficult it's going to be to cut. I guess we'll see. So far I just did this little test cut on the end. Nah, doesn't seem that nice to cut, but we'll, we'll see if the little lathe can do it. I've set it up in the four drawer. It doesn't need to be a four drawer, except my four drawer chuck's a little bigger. It's got a bigger through hole, and this bar fits through it. The three drawer doesn't fit a 17 millimeter bar. The part I'm making needs to be 16 millimeters, so I just need to take a millimeter off the outside. Next off, I need to set the offset map in Linux CNC for the for different tools. So, if I understand this correctly, I have to touch off the first tool. Now measure that. So that's 16.25. So it's 16.25. I'm on tool 1, so I need to go into the tool table to set the right tool. This is tool 1 an M6 with a G43. So tool one's in there. Now I need to touch it off. And I guess touch off X using the European comma instead of a point. Now that I've got all of the tools set up in the diameter, with, which is the x-axis offset, the next thing I need to do is set there the tool offset positions relative to the z-axis, which is along the bed of a CNC lathe. I've faced this piece of material, so that's as good as anything as a reference. What I'm going to do is use a known diameter. In this case, it's a, an end mill, which I killed, which is a 16 millimeter shaft touch off against it, and go through each tool at a time, touch off against it, and set the tool offsets. First off with everything in low gear. What the hell happened there? So what happened there? Well let's have a look at the difference in offset between these two tools, right? Um, the number one tool, the turning tool, is on the center line roughly there, whereas the knurling tool has to be moved back a long way to be on the center line, about here. Unfortunately, in my toolpath, I had a retract of 40 millimeters. There's simply not enough travel here to retract another 40 millimeters. So when I first ran the toolpath as a dry run, when this uh, knurling tool was finished, it did this. So when that happened, it stalled and lost steps. And then when I swapped back to start the actual cycle, the x-axis had been displaced by that five or 10 millimeters. And therefore, instead of this coming in at 17, it came in here and crashed.
All right, now on the bolly lathe, I just need to countersink those holes. This chuck's got some steps uh, machined into its jaws, something I don't normally like, but in this particular case, it's quite handy. I guess I should have just set up an extra tool with the countersink on the mini lathe and done this, done this with a CNC as an extra operation, would have been faster, but oh well. Okay, and last up, I'll just give them a quick dry off with WD-40 and give them a little bit of a buff with some steel wool. Well, there we have it. I've now finished my set of uh, tool holders, as finished as they're ever going to get.